in South Africa, Ghana, and Nigeria for now. We will branch out to other areas of Africa and the world. But for now, these are the targets that we have, and these are the people that have registered for this conference. I know that there are a few other people who have registered from other areas. Um, I see people from Russia, from many other parts of the world, the UK and all that. But usually there are Nigerians too, or people from Ghana and people from South Africa. So the idea is that you should be able to put on an event. So Precious Fountain Foundation Africa Impact Bootcamp is a training for people who will train others on leadership. So you are expected to, from this project, conceive an idea, conceive a place you are going to um, teach people on leadership. You can conceive this idea to be used in training people in secondary schools. You can conceive this idea to use in training people in higher institutions. You can also train people in religious places of worship. But the idea is that you will be able to create a lesson on leadership, draft a proposal to a youth event, a youth gathering, have them accept you to come and then go there and deliver this event deliver this lecture that you've planned. So the courses we've planned out for this project are supposed to teach you how to start from zero to actually speaking and getting feedback, right? So if you stay for the length of all the classes for this bootcamp, you would have learned how to make public speeches um, plan a proposal you send to the schools and places that you need to be invited to. Um, work on your presentation. Go and actually present, return, and give feedback. That is exactly from zero to completion. Now, for those of you who your proposals will be worked on and we are going to find your proposal workable, we will mentor you through the process of actually getting this event put on. And we know that it could take some time to put on a full event to get invitations and all that. And that is why we have put a deadline for June. We are going to have you all of these things explained to you. Jeff is the speaker for today. Jeff is a teacher with Israel in Israel at the moment. Jeff has been a friend of PFL for years now. I think this is the third year working with us, always partnering with us. Um, Jeff is a wonderful person and an experienced teacher. I don't think that if anybody would have to talk about how to go to a school and meet them, that there is anybody less qualified because Jeff has worked as a teacher in the US and he's now in Israel. So he has experience that he can latch on and actually teach us, right? So. I expect the teaching today to be very practical. As you are seated, make sure you are in a very comfortable place. People will be coming in, but by the virtue of the settings we have, they are not going to interrupt what we are doing. So sit in a place where you can write, where you can follow the training. I'm going to give you a secret. Today's training is going to be really serious because it is your proposal that we will, in the end, be grading. So really put your heart to it. Stay in a calm place. You will not stay too long, 40 minutes, and it's done. And you will have to ask all your questions. So the next voice you'll be hearing will be Jeff's. I'm going to stay behind and watch and learn like every other person. And then um, I invite Jeff to continue from here. All right, uh, thank you so much for such a kind introduction, Sok. Um, yeah, I've been very lucky uh, to be um, helping Precious Fountain Foundation um, just when I can uh, over the, the past few years. Um, it's really a great team of people who are um, really doing big things to make big changes. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm glad to really just be helping out in a very small way. <laughs> Um, so first, I actually 
I'm not able to share my screen. Um, so um, if whoever is in charge of the controls, if you could just make sure I can uh, screen share. It says um, screen sharing is disabled. Right, okay. Um, let me see if I can change that. From okay. Report. You should be able to share your screen. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's still saying um, screen share is disabled. Oh, okay. L let me work on it. Let me see. How okay, thanks. All right. Um, so even though uh, I don't have my screen shared at this point, um, hopefully that will be okay soon. Um, sorry about that. Um, I will um, just just begin. Uh, so today's topic is writing proposals for school outreach. Okay. And I'm going to focus both on how you would write a proposal for this competition um, and just more generally um, good advice, just things I've learned from more than a decade of experience with uh, writing proposals. Um, and I want to just share everything I've learned. So um, both you have the successes that I have um, and the things that I haven't done right, um, hopefully you can learn from and not repeat the same mistakes. Um, this is focused on, again, school outreach, but I think a lot of these things will apply to any kind of proposals that um, you, you write. Uh, so my first question for you, I think really the key with any good proposal, um, you need to create connection, find common ground and explore a shared purpose. Um, so again, that's create connection, find common ground and explore a shared purpose. So I want you to just um, start by thinking about and sharing about in the chat, what's a time when you've done that well? Um, when you've created connection, found common ground, and explored a shared purpose. So I'll give you um, like 30 seconds to a minute of, of think time, and uh, please share into the chat um, times that you've done that well. Oh, sure. So yeah, I'll, I'll repeat the question. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I can't yet display this. Um, so what's a time when you've been effective in creating connection or finding common ground or exploring a shared purpose? Think about just when you've been working with somebody and this has gone well for you. What did you do that helped? Okay, so I really like this, creating a real life scenario, right? Something that people can identify with in their day to day. That's always a good way thinking about what someone's day to day is like and how they would be able to use this.
All right, other thoughts? When you've been effective in anything you've done working with people where you created connection, you found common ground and you explored a shared purpose. Okay. So great. Yeah. When you've been talking about leadership, being an effective group member. Okay. So when everybody is really contributing their best ideas. Great. Medical discussions. Okay. So illustrating the scene. Great. Relatable mnemonics to talk to people. Okay. Giving something impactful that will really stick in somebody's memory. All right. So I should be able to share screen now. Okay, so getting involved really in what's going on. When we show that we're really invested in the outcome. So outreach is a volunteer for an NGO. Okay, when explaining a topic. When discussing about building shoes. Okay, so I'm hearing a lot of when we talk about something that we're really passionate about and we want to share and when we really understand the people who we're teaching or we're communicating with all right so this is all good because i think this is all things that you want to be doing when you're writing a proposal and when you're talking to people about the proposal um, that you're going to be writing Okay, so interfacing with people about their challenges and their needs, right? So really asking questions to pinpoint really what those challenges and needs are. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, Saab gave a very nice introduction to uh, talk about who I am, it was, uh, very kind. Um, but I do wanna tell you just a little bit more about myself. Um, my experience doing partnerships for the last 10 years um, and proposal writing um, and how I, I feel like that really connects to who I am as an educator. Um, so I've been an educator in the US. Um, now I'm an educator in Israel, uh, working mostly with um, middle school and high school students, um, also some adult students. Um, and then I've been an educator also in Japan and, and South Korea uh, quite a while ago for me. <laughs> um, so I also, um, I created connections uh, between schools when I was working with an education company called Teachers for Asia. Uh, what Teachers for Asia did was helped uh, schools find teachers from abroad. Uh, so I was a lot involved with the, um, the school side, but also involved with a lot of the teachers. Um, then also with, uh, with Forefront Charity. So um, we did, um, we, we do development work uh, in rural India. And uh, with that work, I've done a lot of the partnership work. So the partnership has involved the programs that we've been doing, um, in India, in education and water and sanitation, and then also in medical care. And then just some of the programs that uh, we do for our community in the US, um, whether that's um, school clubs, um, whether it's um, just local events to um, be involving 
our, our community and supporting our work. Um, and then also with an organization um, in the US called Unfunded List. Uh, what Unfunded List does is gives people feedback on their proposals, um, any kind of proposals, um, whether you're applying to, for a grant um, or you're just um, looking to, to pitch an, any idea really. Um, so in all of this, I feel like the thing that I've really been striving for is always to be empathetic. Um, so when you think of empathy, why do you think uh, that's important with proposal writing? You can enter some thoughts into the chat. Why would empathy be such a key or such a foundation when you're thinking about writing proposals or what you need just leading up to writing the proposal? So you can really relate with the problem, have a deeper understanding of the problem that you're addressing. So you really know how it's going to impact the people who the work is for, right? I like that. Other thoughts? Okay, so yeah, you want sustainable solutions, right? You want something that's not only gonna help somebody in the here and now, but really a tool that they can use to help their community, help uh, whatever group they're part of or help themselves far into the future. Yeah, that whole idea of you're empowering somebody to act for the long term. Right. You really want to be able to put your shoe, put yourself in another person's shoes as much as possible, know what they're thinking and, and feeling, understand them emotionally and intellectually, um, really get to the root of who they are and what they want and how you can help them take a step in that direction. And I'm gonna be using this outline of uh, being authentic, being bold and being creative in this outline um, for your proposal. So you'll, you'll soon kind of see how that, that connects. And yes, also I, I like this point too, um, really to be in touch with the problem as it's changing, right? How you're impacting it, hopefully, you know, as you, uh, the aim is positively, but just the impact that you're having and the changing circumstances and how those affecting people. Okay. All right. So what is our goal in writing a proposal? Okay. So I would say that it's two things. Uh, first, you want to write a proposal that's going to get read. <laughs> okay. All the time, things are sent out, um, written things are sent out, whether uploaded on a website, sent through an email, put on social media, and they're seen very little or, or not at all. So, your first goal in investing all of this time and energy. You want something that's going to be read and something that's going to be read in full. Okay. That's easier said than done because I know when foundations organizations are receiving such a large volume, 
a lot of things are just glanced at very quickly. Um, sometimes even if the um, title or um, you know, um, background information or whatever they, they've received is not compelling, it really won't even get read. Um, the second is really providing value for that institution who you're partnering with, right? They are gonna wanna help the reason why you're reaching out to them is because they want to help the same people that you do, right? So finding what is that common ground, really understanding what it is they want, making sure it's what you want so that they are the same partner, um, so that you are good partners and you're really aligned working toward the same thing. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk about this method today called ready, fire, aim, okay? Usually we hear ready, aim, fire, but this is a little bit different of a method. Um, what do you think you wanna do thinking about a proposal to be ready for it? In just a few words, what do you do to prepare? And this is what I'm gonna go into soon, so if um, you know, you don't have a lot of ideas, that's, that's fine. But just any, any initial thoughts, that ready stage. How do you get ready? How do you prepare so that you can really write an effective proposal. Okay. So research, right? Okay. Research. So understanding the, the subject, right? Okay. Identifying the problem. Okay. And I would say really being able to share these in one sentence. Okay. You need enough of a focus so that you can just very quickly and at most 30 seconds, tell people what is the problem? What is the solution? Okay, also the needs of the partners, right? Whether that's the people you're intending to benefit or that's the organization that you're partnering with, okay? So yeah, maybe what kinds of questions you're gonna ask people to find out the information that you need to know, okay? And I would add like not only the problem, but also the mission, right? The mission that organization has, what it wants to do, what is that big goal that it's working toward changing, okay? Okay, then the next part is uh, FIRE. And FIRE is all about taking action, all right? So it's this method really gives a bias toward action because a lot of the things you're um, going to um, talk about with people, you may not find the right partner, may not find that it's the right people to be working with. Um, this really, this kind of process, when you're looking for an organization to partner with, it's not, it's not so easy. It's not like you just identify one organization and it's a, a perfect match. You really gotta research everything that's out there, talk to people, see if they have any recommendations for other people and other organizations that you should be learning about and connecting to, okay? So that fire is the, the action, right? The writing, the, the sending out messages, the um, sending out graphics, all of that, um, because not everything is going to work as you plan. Right? You don't have perfect knowledge about every person and every organization that, that you're interacting with. Um, and then aim. So aim is thinking about where have you done well? And with a lot of effort, there are things that are going to give you progress, right? Even if it's not having reached that goal. Um, and thinking about all of the things that didn't go as you wanted, but you can try something different, right? Take a different approach. Okay. All right. Okay. So the ready, okay? 
So first, it's really understanding yourself, understanding other people, and then having lots of conversations, okay? Having conversations with the people who you hope are the right people, okay? So knowing yourself is all about really identifying what it is you want to do to have a, the impact you want and why, why this is important to you, why this work is exciting for you, why this work is going to create a really big impact that you want to see, right? In other words, it really needs to be personal, okay? Then it's about understanding others. And I think the biggest mistake that people um, make here is, um, yeah, I really like that comment. <laughs> Proposals are not just bulky documents. In fact, I would say the more focused and concise they are, the better, right? You're thinking in terms of brief sections um, that really convey an idea, and I'll, I'll talk more about that soon. Um, but I think getting back to um, what I was saying before, the mistake I feel people really make is just thinking about things on an organizational level, okay? Thinking, okay, this group of people, they want this, I'm gonna give them this. Instead of really identifying who are the decision makers, what do they want in this situation? And how can I discover more, okay? Because you can always learn something from what's, on somebody's social media or on somebody's website, but you really won't get to the bottom of things and learn the essence of what it is they want to do and why it is that they're involved in this work, okay? Um, I think that preparation for this is really all about conversations. Um, it's all about narrowing your focus. It's all about talking to the right people at the right organizations that you want to do a proposal to. It's about reaching out to the people who know the most and saying why you want to talk to them, why it's worthwhile to talk to them, what kind of benefit that they can gain, and really approaching things as a learner with a very uh, curious kind of mindset. Okay. So, the general kind of structure that I use to think about this when you're having conversations in person, always the best, right? If you can get somebody to speak to you in person, even briefly, um, and that's the right person for you to be partnering with, that's, that's great, okay? That's better than video chat, which is better than a phone call, voice call, which is better than just communicating with written word by email or, or WhatsApp or, or text or whatever it may be. Um, so I think with getting ready, um, it's always helpful. So you really know what it is you're doing to be preparing a pitch and to be preparing a, a one pager, okay? Some kind of summary, some kind of graphic that shows what you want to do, okay? That somebody can really quickly glance at, take, let's say, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, see it, read it, and understand who you are, what you want to do, and why working with you would be the right um, choice for them, okay? So right now, um, I'm going to ask you guys, and we're only going to take a few minutes for this, um, just because um, we only have 40 minutes total. Uh, prepare a pitch, okay? A pitch is who you are, okay? What, what your purpose is, why you're doing this, and why somebody should connect with you, work with you, be interested in you, okay? So on this, um, please add... Uh, to the Google Jamboard link. Um, I provided that in the beginning, but um, if one of the hosts could please uh, just provide that again for everybody.
So that link, if we can go into that, um, access the Jamboard. Uh, okay, so yes, so about the pitch. What a pitch is, is who you are, okay? So I'll write this out, uh, who you are, okay? And this is stuff that's gonna be hopefully used in your proposal. Who you are, okay, your purpose, okay? Uh, why you're doing this work, why this is important to you, why somebody should care, okay? And um, really your proposal, okay? Why somebody should be a uh, partner. Um, so yeah, this is for now, and this is just to get a few thoughts down, okay? Yeah, this is something that um, you're gonna write for 30 seconds, a minute or so. who you are, what you want to do, why you want to do that, and then how people can work with you. And so, yeah, if you can write this on the first page of the Jamboard. Yeah, so please um, go ahead. And you'll be able to see what other participants are writing. Yeah, yeah. So you can go ahead and just write down a few thoughts now. We'll come back together in around a minute. So if you were to meet somebody new and share with them your idea, what would you say? We'll take around another 30 seconds. All right, welcome to those who are just joining now. All right, so I will, uh, go on here. Okay. So the next part, fire. Um, this is all about taking action. Okay. Um, so this is, of course, writing your proposal. Okay. This is what you want to hopefully happen. This is the work that you're doing. Right. Okay. So. Um, a few things for this. Um, first, just think really bold and big, uh, right? Think something that's going to have immediate action, but also that's just part of something bigger, some kind of bigger thing that you want people to have that would make their lives, their community better, okay? Um, so when 
really proposal is you're asking for support, right? But think about throughout it all, what are you giving, okay? What are you giving to everybody who you're working with, the beneficiaries and the partners, okay? Um, understand the need that you're meeting. It needs to be really focused and specific, okay? At this point, at this time, this is what you're doing to help them. And you want it to be something that's not only going to be helping them here and now, but is really something that is sustainable that they can use going forward, right? Um, and then just whoever has um, given you their time, their attention, um, their desire to, to be helpful, um, really show that you appreciate them, okay? Um, you know, people always do have just a choice really about how they spend their time. And the fact that, um, you know, somebody has chosen to spend their time with me, I feel, you know, very lucky anytime that that happens. I, I try to really acknowledge that and, and feel lucky. And you want that to come through when you're speaking, when you're writing, um, just any kind of uh, products that you're making. Um, proposals traditionally, you know, they've been just all written, right? But you can think about with a proposal, um, not only just leading up to the proposal, but the proposal itself, putting in something that is audio or video, right? That has more of a connection and an emotional appeal. Um, all right, so this is um, the, the kind of the format that I think through. Uh, what is their pain point, right? What is not working for them that is the most important thing that you wanna devote your time and energy to making better through the solution, okay? And then, once implementing the solution, how is that going to lead to continual improvements? Okay. All right. So for this, um, and we're only going to take a short time again, uh, this is going to be the process mapping part. This is going to be on the second page of the Google Jamboard. Um, so this is thinking, uh, what is the process that your project is going to take? what's first, second, third, fourth, all the way up to you successfully reaching your goal. How does that look? So really spell that out, okay? Um, generally, like as, as a guideline, um, if you have really 10 parts of your process, that's way too much. Ideally, you would have around five. It needs to be something really that's, that's memorable that you can tell people and they say, okay, I can do this, this, and this, okay? So on the second um, page of the Google Jamboard, um, if we could just reshare again, uh, please, the um, Google Jamboard link. So thinking about what is that process to have this effect that you want. And in making this process, your first step is something you're definitely gonna do. Your end goal is something that you definitely are going to be working toward happening. So those shouldn't change when you're doing the work but the steps in between, they may change. I am just gonna give another around 30 seconds.
just for the sake of time, I, I believe I only have around five more minutes. <laughs> So going on, I now want to get into your project plan, okay? Your project plan is answering all of these questions, okay? Um, your why, what, how, who, when, and where. Okay? So I think this is really a good format to be thinking about any kind of work that you want to do, okay? Why? So what is the problem? What is the evidence that there's this problem? Why do you choose to address this need? Okay, what? Thinking about what you're gonna do to make this change, okay? Making sure that it's all of these things to be a smart change, all right? Um, thinking about how um, it can be measured. Your, your results uh, can be, um, quantified in some way and say that, yeah, if we did do this, it will show that we've impacted this many people or um, this many people have uh, been able to make this kind of measurable improvement, okay? Thinking about how long this can realistically take um, with kind of the minimum it might take, the maximum it might take, trying to anticipate for any issues that could come up. Um, and then, you know, based on low point, um, high point, where do you think is most realistic? And generally, a lot of things do take longer than we think that they will. Um, how, what activities are you going to do in order to make this change, okay? Uh, what are you doing? And then what are the participants um, that you're impacting doing? Um, who, okay? Trying to really think about who, what are all the characteristics of the person who you are going to be helping, okay? Um, thinking about when, okay? So I kind of address that just uh, with, your timeline, okay, and thinking about how long each thing could take, um, and then where. And I think a lot of times um, we could need to plan just a backup for where this might happen, uh, just in case the place that we want is not available for whatever reason. Things can change and you need, need that backup, especially here. Um, but I, I think for, for other planning too. Okay. Um, all right, so now is the, uh, the part of AIM. So you've already um, had the conversations, you've already discovered what it is you wanna do, you've put that plan um, into, um, so into a submission, um, you're hopefully um, underway with everything, um, but you're thinking um, really about how you're going to, to do things differently, all right? Um, either in um, what you're doing to, to be um, creating the proposal or once you're running the project, I think this very much applies, okay? So it's all about revisiting rethinking, you know, giving yourself credit for what is good and what's gone well and, you know, what has connected and appealed to people um, and thinking about what's the biggest change that you can make um, in order to have a more effective proposal, um, in order to be more impactful with the work, okay? I think this is, um, really thinking about, are you talking with people who um, are going to be actually making the decisions, are going to be actually supporting your work? So continually rethinking that. Um, 
and then you know thinking um you know when possible um you know you can always go out and do things on your own but there are huge benefits to partnering with people who have the experience who have the knowledge who have the resources right um so um just kind of finding i guess that right balance of okay um this is a time when I want to be working with these people, um, submitting my proposal, um, and thinking about um, who are the people who are the decision makers, um, and thinking about, you know, maybe you don't need to go through all parts of um, a process that's outlined on a website, but you do need to do certain things that are going to be um, connect with the people who who are going to hopefully be supporting you. Um, so I always think about with all of this, um, always think about how you can be doing something that's creative rather than uh, critical. Um, since we are short on time, I'll kind of describe the activity that I that I have in mind for this. Um, it's kind of a framework for uh, analyzing your work, uh, whether that's a proposal or the actual work itself. Um, it's, I think, become like a, a very well-known thing. Um, it's called SWOT, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, uh, and strengths. Um, oh, sure. Um, Okay, so yeah, uh, I, we do have uh, enough uh, time to do this activity. Okay, <laughs> um, so yes. So if we could um, go to the Google Jamboard, this will be on the third page. All right, so it's thinking about SWOT. So that's our framework for this. So I'll just spell that out for people. Um, just what each part is. So you can use this either um, for something you've done before, um, or you can use it for, um, you know, what you have uh, for your ideas for this project, kind of anticipating, okay? So strengths, weaknesses, okay, opportunities, okay, and then, threats. What are all the things you're doing well? What are the things you're not doing well? Okay, where can you do better? All right. And then what may get in the way of you doing a good job? Try and anticipating all of the things that maybe could go wrong. So there will be a time also to be asking questions at the end. So write down just either for the idea that you have that you're planning to submit for the proposal um, or for just some other work that you've done before. Okay. Write down these four things, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats.
So we'll take another minute or two, but you can always go back to this, see what other people have written. Uh, so the link is above. It's the one that says jamboard.google at the beginning. We'll take around another minute. All right. Okay, so I am gonna go on. Um, so this is now with your proposal, thinking about all of the evaluation criteria, okay? So all of the ways that uh, this will be evaluated for a quality proposal, a quality idea, um, something that can be um, effective and achieve the goal that you want. Um, you know, it's a, partly about just having that um, vision for change um, and uh, what you want to be achieving. But then it's also about do you have you thought through everything that's um, going to be needed in order to get there? And what will you do when maybe things don't? go as planned, because with every project, there's gonna be a time when things just don't go as planned, okay? Um, so it will be evaluated first on context, okay? Um, so context is, um, you know, how, what are all the conditions around this, where this is taking place? Um, the, so not only the, the place, also the time, um, also, uh, the people, the circumstances, the communities, just all the, all the conditions, okay? All right, next is about relevance, okay? So thinking about relevance um, with the um, organization that you're submitting the proposal to, is this what they want to see, right? Does it really align with the work that they want, the mission that they have, okay? Um, aims, that's thinking about the, the goals, okay? Um, are they reasonable, right? Can they be done within the, the time of the project? Um, are they things that are, there's evidence that it is, a clear problem and that it can be addressed through your project. Um, next, the rationale, okay? Rationale is really all about the why, okay? Um, you're doing this rather than deciding to do some other project. Why is this the best use of your time and resources? And why is it the best use of the organization's time and resources? Um, Next is the methodology, right? Methodology is about how you're going to be doing it, all right? Um, what do you do in order to do 
the first part, then the second part, then the third part, okay? Um, ethical. Um, ethical is just, you know, um, that's really a, a place where um, they're, they're, they're really kind of assuming that, um, you know, everybody is like following just basic ethics and just looking for something that maybe doesn't seem right, doesn't just align with um, basic ethics. Um, budget, budget is about the money, right? So does, um, what is the cost of this? Um, costs are not always straightforward, sometimes they are. Um, you know, where might you need to spend more money? Uh, where could, um, you know, what are all of your, your projections? Um, but, um, you know, also just leaving a little room for error. If there's something that doesn't go right and uh, you will need to spend more money on a certain part, um, just accounting for that. Um, and then the value, right? Value is, with the people who you're serving, are you really giving them something that's of tremendous value to them that they can use for the here and now and then continue using um, onward? Um, will it have the impact that you want and will it be an impact that is for the community that you're serving and then they can go out and hopefully continue to improve their community and then even uh, more communities uh, with this change. All right, and we've reached the end. Uh, thank you all for a lot of great participation, sharing your thoughts, um, listening. I hope that this was a lot of um, good things that you can use for your proposal, um, but just for future proposals and um, when you're partnering with people and organizations in the future. Um, so here, uh, I just, uh, I'm happy to uh, really help anybody and everybody out one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so here's my, my contact uh, number. Um, it's an Israeli number for WhatsApp. Everybody is welcome to send me a message there with any requests I would like to help. Uh, there's my email address. You're also welcome to uh, send me anything there. Um, my uh, LinkedIn to connect there. Um, and I thank you all very much for your time and attention for here and now, um, but also the work that you're going to be doing for the people you're going to be um, helping. Um, and then just being people who are determined to make an impact. That's something that I think is really great and, and shouldn't be overlooked. So please, my contact information, uh, contact me any of those three ways, anytime, um, but any ways I can help. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Jeff. Um, I really appreciate how you went through this session step by step i know many of us due to i noticed that the network signal was really bad for a number of people so they were coming and going coming and going but in order to understand these classes you need to follow through and that is why we sent a number of reminders for you to ensure that you you sit in a particular spot in your house or in your office that you have internet to work in very well, right? So what Jeff was explaining is the procedure for you to take in writing a proposal. Now, if you've been putting these things down, you are going to find it really useful by the time we send you the format of the proposal template, right? So I, I thought you would also have gone ahead to show that, but we are keeping that for the last class. So he's telling you how to conceive a project, how to think of the, um, the place you are going to, put them in your mind as you are going to um, send out your proposal. When you are creating a proposal, you need to be sure that the people you are pro um, writing for 
understand and have a need for what you are writing for. Now, we don't understand it now. When we post the video, please go and listen to it again, especially for our friends that have issues with their network, because I can see many people coming and going and all that. Listen to it again. You are going to find it really useful in the light of how we want you to describe the project you are going to do. Every single person in this call now who is going to be um, eligible for the $100 grant must have to write a project proposal. And that is what he described. So if you have any questions, I will take them. Um, I'll just take the first five people to raise their hands or the first questions that we have in the chat. Um, that's how we're going to do it because we are really running for the next class, right? So um, I'll just take the first five people only. I'm sorry. Okay, let's take the first three people now. So Jeff, I will have to unmute them. They will ask their questions, then you try to answer that. Okay, so Mo, I think we agreed we should call you Mo yesterday. So. Hi, good evening. You can call me Wanu. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, perfect. So, thank you, Jeff, for the session. I could follow and get the scope of what you were saying. I wanted to ask um, writing proposals. I mentioned earlier that I learned that um, um, proposals are not bulky documents as opposed to the usual narrative of like having to write. long essay is explaining your solution and all of that. So um, what I'm asking now is that when I'm writing um, and detailing the aim and um, the how of the project, am I, from what standpoint am I writing from? Am I, you kept mentioning the organization that I'm partnering with. I understand that you mean that it, um, it may not just be me who would um, execute the project that I am, writing um, as a partner with another organization. So am I putting in consideration the uh, um, other organization that I'm reaching out to, that I'm solving a problem for, or, um, uh, or I am talking on behalf of myself? Like I got confused in the middle there. Thank you. All right. Um, so yeah, thanks for the, the really good question. So um, I understood the question to be, um, whose perspective are you really writing from? And I think that in writing, you wanna capture the perspectives of everybody who's gonna be doing the work. Um, so by everybody, I mean yourself um, and everybody else who's going to be, um, you know, you're kind of bringing in to do this work. Um, and then as much as um, you see the partner organization um, doing the work or providing feedback or mentoring or whatever, um, you want also to be including like that perspective. Um, so it's, in short, it's just everybody who's going to be involved in, in some way, really trying to see um, what is it that um, you would want each person to be doing to be working toward the project purpose and goal? Does that answer your question? I will need to unmute her again and all that. So let, let's just take it like that. I move to the next okay. person because we are really out of time. This is already okay. 720. So Samuel, um, Samuel, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay. 
Okay, can I, can I hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead, Sam. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, concerning the, the project for the because of network issue, I'm not following. I can't, but I wish to ask a question. Uh, I'm I'm just, so, my major question is, is for business. What should be my value in putting it down? What should be my target? Okay, I think his question goes towards business. Can I, can I, his signal is really yes, poor. Okay. His signal is really poor. So he's, I think he's talking about um, business proposals, right? That is um, writing a proposal you submit for a business. Yes, 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 exactly. Uh -huh. So. Is this the okay. same ideas, the ideas you were bringing, Jeff? Is it the same for a business proposal or are you focusing only on creating a proposal for an outreach? Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, I got the part about business proposals and I, I'm, I'm not sure if I, I got the whole question, but uh, what I'm getting is uh, what is the important differences between business proposals and just uh, proposals in, in general. Um, so I, I think like the biggest difference is with business, you always need to show evidence that um, you have a plan for it to be profitable, um, that it makes business sense. Um, whereas, uh, you know, for um, some other types of proposals, um, it's, you maybe don't need to focus on how is this going to be um, a good or service uh, sold um, in a way that is profitable. Right, right. So Jeff, um, I'll have other people write their questions to us via direct chat so that we can move to the next discussion we have. We even have short beyond the required 40 minutes. So I really appreciate okay. you, Jeff. And I'm really sorry for those who are unable to get to ask their questions. Please drop it in the chat. If we have time at the end, we'll still address it. Otherwise, as Jeff has said, you can always contact him. You can send him an email. You can chat him up on LinkedIn and um, every other means you can get it. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, I'll be yes. taking it from here. We have the recording. Right, thank of, you all. <laughs> thank you. We have the recording of Jeff's teaching. We'll be posting it on YouTube. Um, we'll send the links to you so that you can watch it later. The next teaching we will be having will be from Mawuli Emmanuel Abalo. Uh, Abalo is a doctoral cum research master's student of the University of Hull. Um, he's um, a youth leader. He has um, worked as a youth leader for years and he has experience in youth work. Um, yes, I think this is Jeff's, you can find in the chat, Jeff's WhatsApp address, if you WhatsApp number, I guess that's his WhatsApp number. Or even if it's not, you can contact him via email and LinkedIn if you have any questions. So Mauli is very, very experienced in this regard. He runs a youth work project that has mentored many young people. And um, I want to say that I was really blessed to meet Mauli and he'll be taking us on content creation. That is how to develop the content that you want to deliver to either students or any other youth group in the line with the purpose of the AIB, which is for you to be able to they create lessons for leadership, right? So without much wasting of time, I'll call on Emmanuel to immediately take over from here and um, speak to us on this topic.
Hello. <clears throat> um, please, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, all right. Good evening to everyone. And <laughs> so thank you for your kind introduction. And I want to use this, this opportunity to thank everyone for still staying in on. I know we've had a long day starting six o'clock till now. So thank you very much for still staying on. And we'll try to make the session as brief as possible so we can move to the questions. Yeah, so once again, you're welcome to the, se the second and last session for um, the African Impact Bootcamp. My name is Emmanuel, and I'll be speaking on content creation. So listening to the presentation that um, Cheesy gave yesterday on public speaking on, and on what Jeb did present today, you will notice some similarities, which has to do with the content that they used in communicating the ideas within their presentation. And that is going to be the focus for today's presentation. So some of the key points that Jeb did highlighted in this presentation i'll be touching briefly on some aspect of it then i'll quickly move on to um take us through a couple of things that would also help us to create a good content so just briefly i mean sub did give a brief introduction about myself so i'll just quickly move on to the latter part of um this introductory slide so just to issue a disclaimer i know content creation is a broad topic and if you're going to keep discussing it, there will be different angles that we can still address this particular issue. So what I'm going to do for today is that I will explain what content and content creation is. Then I will <clears throat> then highlight the transferable principles that are required for creating a good or a ridiculously good content for any engagement. Yeah, so just by way of outline, we will be touching on what content is and what content creation is. Then we'll be looking at we will be asking ourselves why should we even bother about content creation in the first place then we will quickly move on to the importance of creating a content and how to avoid what i term as content mediocrity or mediocre content then we also look at what creating quality content means and where content creation is needed then we'll be looking i'm exploring the five w's of content creation then we will now narrow the conversation down to how to use or apply those principles in creating a content for either a business proposal, a business engagement, public speaking, and academic presentation. So just some um, few housekeeping rules. Um, we are learning together. So I do expect everyone to fully cooperate in whatever it is that we'll be discussing today. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so at the end of today's session, these are my expectations that we will all get to know what content and what content creation is. The five W's for content creation, then how to also apply these same principles in creating a good content for any engagement at all. So these are transferable skills. So let's consider them as template that would help us to know how to create any content for any speaking engagement that we will be privileged to be engaged in. So I'd like to start off by saying that the end goal of your content should be to spark interaction or ignite conversation between you and your audience and among your audience. It can either be um, being within the classroom environment where you're speaking to your students or giving a platform to speak with different people within a community. Anything it is that you present or you communicate, the end goal should be that you just don't speak and go and people forget about what you told them. The purpose of your communication should be that at the moment you leave the space, your people or the audience that you spoke with will remember what you told them. Having said this, that this is the end goal that we are looking at, let's now look at look closely at the processes that we are we will be expected to go through and creating a good content. So I'd like to start off once again by emphasizing this point that learning to craft a better content can involve nothing more than developing some necessary muscles. For those of us who are interested in building our muscles, going to the gym, keeping a nice physique and all that, you would agree with me that it doesn't take a day to develop the kind of body stature or the physique you are looking out for. It takes constant practice. You have to dedicate some time to it. You need 
a lot of sacrifices. You need to be intentional, even about the kind of food that you eat. So it doesn't just happen automatically. In the same way, creating a good content can be, or is akin to writing well or speaking properly or being able to share your thoughts without hesitating. And all these practices take a lot of time. But my goal tonight isn't to scare us. My goal tonight, just as um, Cheesy and Jeff excellently explained and took us through, our goal is to help steer us away from thinking that we can't create a good content to thinking that we can actually do something about it. There is this um, six by one principle we say that for anything that you're interested in doing and you're interested in becoming good at it if you dedicate at least one hour every day six days a week six days a week yeah you will automatically become good at it so let's just take this as a guidance step to help us create a good content so what is a content now knowing the definition of something is really important for a number of reasons, it helps you to really understand what it is that you're doing. Like when um, Jeff was speaking, he took his time to ask us a question first by uh, asking our circumstances or situations. So we've been able to connect with people, where we've been able to share some less, some experiences and all that. And we gave excellent examples. Those examples that we gave, or the things that he did mention, are more like an introductory statement to help us understand the definition of issues. So I do define content as any medium through which we communicate with people. So I'm speaking with you now, what I'm doing is I'm communicating the content to you and I'm trying to engage you. I'm trying to let you listen to what I'm communicating to you. That is an aspect of a content. But more important, the experience of your audience will be based on the content you present to them. Yesterday when Chizzy was speaking, one of the things he emphasized on often was the fact that we should consider our audience as the customers. And in business principles, the customer is always right and the customer is your focal point. So in everything that you do, your end goal should be that your, your customers are happy with the product you're selling to them. In the same way, if it's a proposal you're writing, the end goal should be that your customers, in this case, the people will be reading the proposal you're putting forward to them or those who be reviewing the business proposal you are giving to them will buy into the idea you're presenting to them. And your proposal is more like an introduction of who you are. So your personality, even if it's a virtual communication, your personality plays a critical role in it and how you tend to engage with the audience is very important. Now, having looked at what content is, I think it would be good to also briefly look at what content creation is. So content creation is basically identifying four critical points, which I will mention briefly, identifying, deciding, formalizing, and producing. So content creation is basically the process of identifying a new topic, or it could even be an old topic, something that someone is already working on, but you feel like you want to contribute something new to it. So having identified it, you now decide which form you want to, you want the content to take. Then you start, you move on by formalizing the strategies, you'll be adopting. So I saw someone asking a question earlier, that was the difference between a strategy and an activity. The strategies would involve the steps you take or the steps you will be taking to help realize the intended objective of your proposal. Now, the activities you'll be undertaking are embedded in the strategies. So suppose your initial strategy would be to speak with the community members. That is a strategy. Now, the activity would be the forum that you will create to engage with the people that you'll be speaking with. Would it be one-to-one, one-on-one interaction? Or are you going to organize a town hall meeting where you call people to come around? Would you be giving out some, some items to them? That forms part of the activities you'll be engaging in. But the strategy deals with the plans you'll be taking. Now, having gone through all these things, the most important thing is if you have an idea, if you decide on it, you start formalizing it by developing a strategy and so you don't produce it. It just stays with you know and gets to know about the idea that you had in mind. So the end goal of or the end goal for content creation should be to produce that which you initially conceptualized the idea for. So we've considered what content is, what content creation is. And we started out by saying that this are key to building your muscles. 
So now I want to ask ourselves, why should we even bother about creating a content? For, for four reasons, briefly. Number one, your audience are 131% more likely to patronize a product with a good educational content. So I learned recently that anytime you even put an application for employment, employees are employees often take six seconds to read. Six seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six seconds to read through your CV. So they just look at the profile of your CV. If nothing catches their attention in the profile of your CV, they just discard it because often they have a pile of documents to review. So it tells you that if what you are trying to put out there should capture someone's attention, there are a lot of information around. No one has the time to keep reading, reading, reading. The moment the person reads the first three lines of anything you're presenting to them, it should capture their attention. And that's what produce or generate that interest for them to keep reading it. The second point is content drives conversations. Remember we said from the in the beginning that the end goal of your content should be to spark an interaction either between you and your audience or among your audience. And it affords the opportunity to invite others into the relevancy of your world. We said we'll be asking you guys to write a proposal at the end of this um, bootcamp. Now, whether the proposal you write will capture the assessor's attention will be based on how you craft the ideas you put on paper. You can have a beautiful idea in your mind, but if you don't translate that beautiful um, idea in your mind onto the paper and present it in a way that captures our attention, it doesn't drive any further conversation. The third point is content fosters trust, credibility, authority, and it also improves affinity to your product. All these plenty, plenty things. I said basically that the content you create helps us to believe what you are telling us. As simply as that. So Jeff asked that we write, um, we just write a pitch. That pitch that we were asked to write, I read someone's, someone's, state, um, someone's statement and the person said, he believes that inherent in everyone is the ability, of, uh, the ability for that person to grow. That is the person's um, market sell or the selling point of the person's statement that he believes everyone can grow. Okay, the moment that I read this and perhaps I'm trying to assess what a person is writing, you will now be interested, okay, to grow. What do you mean by to grow? So the next statement the person would add to it will now let us appreciate, perhaps using examples, appreciate the extent where this person is interested in what he or she was talking about. The last point is content allows us to tell our story and also gives us the opportunity to overcome resistance or address objections. The best person to tell your story is you. No one can tell your story better than yourself. So anytime you have the opportunity to say something, you've been given that platform to tell your story in your own words. So no one will misquote the thing that you said. And that is what content creation is all about. Following up, following on from what I said earlier, our speech and our writing conveys the content of our personality and also advises how people tend to treat us. But a critical point is the principle of voice is that anytime you communicate something, it is often difficult, if not impossible, to undo the damages caused. An example is having an egg. The moment it falls and it breaks, that is it. It will be very difficult for you to put it back together. So in writing your content or even sending an email to any organization you're interested in working with, remember that the moment you click on the send button or you submit that document, <laughs> it may be difficult for you to retrieve it. Of course, lately, Gmail has the option of undoing the email you just sent. But what if you're not able to undo it quickly? It means that the moment you send that document, it is very difficult for you to go or change up on the assessor to explain what is it you're trying to say. So in creating your content, you wouldn't want to abuse that opportunity. You want to spend time to think through it and write something. The moment you send it and anyone gets a hold of it and reads, the person would love your idea and would be happy to engage further with you. Now, having said all this, I would, just, I would like to pause here briefly, then please just use the chat box in our own words. How do we understand content and content creation? I know some of us had uh, pre-existing ideas before we came 
And I've also given my definition of what content and what content creation is. I've, I provided the references for it. But in your own words, and from what I also did explain earlier, how do you understand content creation? I'll just give a space or let's say 30 seconds. Let's try, please. Let's use the chat box and just let's just have um, some few conversations over there. Okay, so Jeff says the ability to have your story and thoughts understood as you want them to be through writing, speaking, and video in a way that provides help for other people. One who says, I understand content to be any method I use to communicate a concept to anyone. I am um, no content is a piece that talks about someone, an idea of personality, which can capture people's mind and foster conversations. Great. Content is a message you pass to your audience regarding a particular topic, communicating an idea in a way that brings out an appreciable manner. Okay, foster. Okay, according to what you said, content mean a medium to pass information to other people that will meet their needs. Great, great, great. Tell a story, joining information together to suit your audience. Okay, so just put it piece, bits and pieces together. That's great. Then the information you convey and information that conveys your ideas and thoughts around you. Okay, great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I see people are still typing, but I will be reading some of those um, contents later. I'll just quickly move on. Thank you, guys. So why avoid content mediocrity? For three reasons. Number one, you have become a planet of publishers. Everyone is almost every day publishing something. Either we are using, we are typing something on our WhatsApp status or posting something on Facebook, Twitter, even speaking with our families. We are all content that we are creating. So there is that penchant for us to want to create something quickly because everyone is saying something. A word of advice, don't. Don't feel pressure to just say something because everyone is saying it. And you are better off thinking through what you want to say, what you want to type before you say it is really important. Remember what I said earlier, using the egg example. The second point is brevity and clarity matter more than ever. Now, someone was asking a question about a business proposal. Remember that if you're presenting a business proposal, chances are that in the business world, there are other people also presenting a similar idea. You can't beat around the bush. You need to sell your idea, be straight on, sell the idea succinctly that as soon as you're done with it, you, are, you capture the attention of your assessors. Now, if you keep beating around the bush, chances are that you are giving your opponent a competitor advantage and the person will just take the opportunity and steal it from you. You want to be straight to the point. Number three, what matters now is in storytelling. What matters is telling a true story. Well, I always tell the people I get a privilege to mentor the application. I always tell them that no one can tell your story better than you. So when given an opportunity to tell your story, there is no need lying about your story. The best stories are the stories that are the truth. So tell your story in your own language and connect with your audience once you are speaking. You can just look at the space within which you're speaking and present your story very well. I'd like to borrow John Mason's um, book on an average called and, um, An Enemy Called Average. He describes mediocrity by saying that it is the region bounded to the north by compromise, to the south by indecision, to the west by lack of vision, then to the east by past thinking. 
Now, these things prevent us from always seeing the full picture of what we are interested in. And if we allow these things to cloud our judgment, it will be very difficult for us to write a good content. I believe some of us had already had brilliant idea that we had wanted to write, but we keep postponing. We keep saying, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, I'll do it this, I'll do it this way. You are better off putting your thoughts on paper. You see, often when you have an idea in your mind, once you put it on paper, you may think you have you know what you want to talk about. But the moment you start writing, that is when you truly know whether you really knew or know what you want to do properly. So once you have an idea in your mind, don't keep postponing it. A word of caution. And I want to borrow this one from Lenstein. He says, to avoid content mediocrity, the content you create should be packed with utility. It should be seeded with inspiration and should be honestly empathetic. When Jeff was speaking, he mentioned empathy and proposal rights in the relationship. And I read the excellent responses people gave one new, from one new through to Victor helps you to relate to the problem and all that. I'll be share, I'm sharing some few light on it and we'll quickly move on. So what does it mean to let your content be seeded with utility? It means that you clearly help your audience to do something to do something that matters to them. Remember the audience are your customers. Customers want to buy something that they see to be important to them. Even if your idea is brilliant, but your customers do not identify with it, it becomes just, as, um, just, it becomes just a brilliant idea, that is all. It becomes just a brilliant idea, that is all. If it's a proposal you are writing and you want sponsorship for, you should be able to communicate it in a way that those reviewing your application would find it relevant to give you their money. If it's a business idea, they should find it relevant to invest their money in the business. That's the utility aspect of it. The inspiration is the content should inspire, should be inspired by research or creatively inspired or both. Your ideas matter. Once you have an idea, you just don't end it. You have to do your research about it, just as a proposal writing techniques, Jeff um, took us through. You do your research. It can be a blend of the research that you did or an original idea that you conceived. You just bring it together. You <laughs> see, the funny thing is there is nothing new under the sun, but every now and then people keep you creating things is because once they see an idea, they research and see how to improve it. So that is what you do, inspiration, the empathy. You focus on the people and you view what you're writing through their eyes. I'd want to borrow the definition Wono gave. He says, she said, empathy helps you to relate to the problem addressed by the proposal. Then another person said, everybody can feel so. Showing empathy brings everyone into your feeling. That is an excellent definition. You see, you bring them into your feeling. So the content you are creating, the moment people read it, they should be able to feel what you are feeling when you wrote it. Straight on, as I mentioned, I'll be focusing on business, academic, and public speaking for this presentation. But before that, I'd want you to think about these two questions, the hypothetical questions. The first one says, what do you believe to be true about your subject? The subject here represents anything you're interested in writing the content for. What do you believe to be true about it? The second question is, what are you going to do to try to convince your audience of? You see, when you think about these two things, and you have a writing proposal, you can still apply the SMART principle Jeff taught us and know how to write it for what is true about what you want to write about. How are you going to convince us? With these two questions, I'll use the five principles for creating a good content. Then we see how we apply them. So these are the five principles. And I'll be taking them in 10. So the first one, oh, before I take that one, remember the definition for what content creation is. I mentioned it involves three, four components, identifying, deciding, formalizing, and producing. So you start with identification of, a, of an issue you're interested in, then you produce it. But in between, you have decisions, decisions to make and formalizing processes to go through, which entails the strategies and all that you need to come up with. Now let's look at the first principle. Why are you creating the content you are creating? Why is very important? Why helps you to understand the value of something? What are your goals? What do you hope to accomplish? 
What are your goals? What do you hope to accomplish? So you have a beautiful idea you want to write on. What are the goals for that idea? Because the idea should be able to meet that, those goals. And those goals should, at the latter end of it, be something that, that, that the customers or your audience identify with. The cornerstone of any content strategy is to match what you want to produce with your objective and goals. So if you, have, if you have an idea, the idea can be to let people talk or be confident when they are speaking. Now the question is, why do you want to do that? You can write, you can start bulleting your points. So the reasons you ascribe to why you want people to be confident and speak, those point becomes your goals then you can use those points as a strategy to start moving on. Okay, I want people to be confident to speak because it gives them that opportunity to share their thoughts, to share the ideas that they have in mind. That is an objective. It's different from confidence speaking. So you now match confidence speaking to align people to speak what, what they are thinking. That is a goal. So you can now start pursuing the goal. So how then do I make people speak confidently? Or how do I make people speak the idea that they have in their mind? You start looking for strategies to help bring out these good things in people. The second question is, who is your audience and who are you? And this one, I will be breaking the questions into two. The first one is, who are the members of your target audience? What are their problems? Jeff mentioned this, the pain, he, he used the phrase, uh, which the pain points or something. What are their problems? And more importantly, how are you going to help them? How would you reach them? You see, people would only be interested in you based on the problems you solve for them. If you're someone who caused them problems, they'll run away from you. So if you've seen, if you have an idea, you should start asking yourself, what, what are you going to, what is the idea going to solve? I love problems because anytime I see problems, it helps me to think of a solution, think of what can I do to help or remedy this issue. And that really helps me because the moment I identify that problem, my mind starts thinking of different things to do and that makes you relevant. And so you can apply that to your proposal and even to a business. Then the second part of the question, what is unique about you? And why are your points of view and your perspective? Your personality matters when you are writing. Do not hide it. It matters. There is a way that your personality can help stand you out even when you are writing or you are speaking. So let's not forget them. What do you want the content to achieve? What effect do you want your content to have? Should it be something that people read and they go like, oh, that's a nice idea and they trade it away? But the moment they read it, do you expect them to take an action? What action do you want your audience to take? Your focus should be to present yourself as credible to your audience. This is not to force, to present a false image of yourself, but you should have done your research and present something that addresses their concern. That is what makes you relevant. When and how are you going to develop the content? Two questions. So three, okay. How can you present the contents in a way that best engages the intended audience? By what process are you going to create the stuff you need to create? And I'm going through the questions in a haste, but all the slides will be made available to you. What's your publishing or delivering schedule? This is really, really, really important. The schedule, the timeline you are working with, in some cases, even the budget. You see, if you know the timeline you are working with, it helps you to start working ahead of time dedicate enough time to even proofread your document before you submit it is really a bad practice to try to work <laughs> when you are almost nearer to the deadline you may be because you are in a haste trying to put the document together you may miss a lot of stuff and that is really really bad so please know the timelines that you are working with give yourself enough space to think through your ideas the last question where are you going to publish? Where are you going to publish? Where can it be found? Jeff mentioned this. You want people to read, but beyond and beyond the reading, you want them to do something about it. But where are you going to communicate those ideas? You don't want to write the ideas either on your tablet or in your book, then you leave it in your room. Where are you going to publish it? The 
space you intend publishing it will determine how you work on the content. Now, having said all these things, we're going to now narrow down and apply these principles, thinking through how to use them in creating like a business proposal or a business content. And I have a couple of questions that would help, that would help guide the discussion. So the first is, what is unique about your business? So if you want to write a business proposal, the first question you need to ask yourself is this, what is unique about the business you want to create? You need to really think about it before you write. So ask yourself this question and just provide a response there. Even if the response is just one, a statement or a phrase, just write it. If you have a lot of things to write, keep writing it. What is interesting about your business? And what is even interesting about you? Maybe your business developed out of a problem in your community or a problem you've, been, you've encountered personally and you feel the need to address it don't shy away from writing it. Let it be there. What problem is your company trying to solve? So this links with the previous question. Now what inspired your business? Remember what you said earlier, inspiration should be seeded with inspiration. What a hard moment as your company had now, if you're not starting the company, this might not necessarily fit over there but what you can also communicate over here is what you believe sorry what you believe your business is going to do or it's going to change it's going to act, the effect it is going to have on the lives of people who use it so this can even help you to now start thinking of piloting the business idea and see how it runs how people buy into it can even decide to organize a survey like my brother often does whenever he has a business idea he designs a survey sends it out to the targeted customers, solicit their views, then he comes home, analyzes their responses, then see, like that helps him to see what they may be needing and all that. And it helps him to really design his business strategy properly. How has your business evolved and how do you feel about your business and customers? Are you looking at just treating your customers as a point of profit making? <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the, obvious result of creating a business to make the profits. But beyond making a profit, there are certain businesses like Waitrose, they consider their um, customers as partners, their workers as partners. So that immediately shapes the idea or the mindset that their customers have. So they relate with them as if they are doing the business together. How do you see your customers? These things are important in writing a business proposal. They should feature in it how you intend treating your customers, what you will be doing. Then this question, an obvious way to tell your story and how will your company change the world and make it a better place. I'd like to use an example quickly to run through um, this. I brought this one from um, a startup called iGreen. So just using their mission and vision statement, which in essence captures the essence of most of the questions I raised. So the person was asked, what is the vision of your business? The person said, you want people and vegetables to make a difference. It's just a simple statement, but in effect, they've captured the inspiration of their business. They've captured what is unique about their business and what they intend doing. And at their targeted audience, when it came to the mission statement, they said to create a brand that sells fresh and packaged vegetables to care university community. Now, the university community here was referring, is referring to the student community with the sole aim of promoting healthy nutrition. So they are selling the idea of promoting healthy nutrition at affordable quality prices and also delivering the product to them at the time the students need it. And all these big things they are saying is embedded by two ways, um, fresh vegetables and packaged vegetables. Often when you go to the market and buy a vegetable, we often see them dirty and all that. And some student wouldn't even get a time to go to the town. So this person sat down and thought, okay, so this is what I want to do. He designed a survey, sent it to the students and asked them questions. They were seeing different, different things. They would like their vegetables to be chopped, to be cut, to be fresh, to be delivered to them on this, this and that the person put the ideas together and now designed their mission and vision statement. And they've been using this to 
work and it is doing well for them. So you see, it takes time to go through that. It is worth it once you do it. Now creating an academic content or content for public speaking. This is a bit similar to what Jeff said. So I wouldn't want to go into details. You just go start with an idea. You do your research on it. You determine the direction of the content you want it to take or the direction of your, yeah, the direction of your content. Then you provide a headline. I think someone asked this question. So in creating a business idea, the most important thing is remember your headline speaks a lot. You don't want to see a lot of things in the headline. For example, with my presentation, the headline was content creation. That is all. Now, the moment you see content creation, content creation means a lot of things to different people. When I did ask for the definition, you provided different responses. That is a headline. Now, you go into the details to now see the final effect of what a person is trying to communicate as what the content creation is. So please, be very careful. So I want to read a statement that says, on average, 80% of people will read your headline, but only 20% will read the rest of your article. So if the, con the headline is not catchy, what happens is they will not even bother to read the remaining statement. But once they read the content and it's something that stands out, okay, they are um, enticed to read it further, right? Have a break, what I said earlier. Try to take some time away from what you're writing to proofread it. So I want to use this example of a presentation I gave, and this was taken from a 15,000 dissertation, and I was given the opportunity to speak at a conference, and I had only eight minutes to talk. So I have 15,000 word documents, and I'm to talk about this 15,000 documented eight minutes. So immediately you realize that you do not have the space to <laughs> see everything you did. So what did I do? I just had a simple topic, the map of Ghana with the map of Africa, hiding very, very little there. I'm done. The moment they see it, they know where I'm talking from. So just the introductory statement just captures at least to a large extent captures the attention to what I'm going to talk about. Then I moved on to, I started thinking, okay, so this is what I want to talk about. But the literature I've read a lot. I can't put everything into it. So what do I do? I had this idea, then I decided to do this. At the time I was doing this, I didn't know it would even be important, but I just had the idea. So I put it on paper, wrote it. Then I saw this paper and decided to add it to it, then provided evidence of what I'll be doing. Now, when I finished speaking within the eight minute presentation, someone took a screenshot of the presentation I gave and posted it on Twitter. Now, what is the essence of me bringing this? Sometimes you see the content that you create may immediately be noticed by people and they'll start talking about it. The impact or the effect will be immediate. Sometimes, you wouldn't even see the effect of what you created, but that doesn't mean it didn't have the impact. Sometimes when you see it, it is just an, a form of an encouragement, but if you don't see it, you shouldn't be discouraged, especially if you know you did your work and you put in your best into it and you wrote something with your heart. I wanted us to take a stretch break, but before the stretch break, I know we are almost running out of time today, so I wouldn't want us to take a stretch break. I wanted you to do a little dance with this time for Africa, but I will just skip that part of it and go to the next slide. I'm just about um, at the tail end of my presentation where after which I'll just ask a couple of questions before I take questions from you lovely audience. And thank you for listening attentively throughout. Oh. I said, I'm not playing it. Yeah, so class activity. So using the five W's for content creation, I want you guys to pick any example, an example of an activity you're interested in. Remember that I said that, con that content creation starts with an idea. So please use the chat box to write the idea, anything at all that you are hoping to write on. Put it on the, um, within the chat box 
you know, I will go through it. I'll just pick one at random. Then I would call out a person who maybe wrote that idea, ask a couple of questions. Then we see how best we can create an objective or two out of it and see how we can apply those principles to briefly use it as short exercise. So without wasting much time, can we, can we please use the chat box and type the idea you have in mind? Okay. Coping with anxiety, understanding an average teenager. Okay, mental health. All right, so students in different grades mentoring each other when you fail, how to prevent some disease in Africa, prevention, inferiority complex, facing your fears. Okay, so I'd like to pick up on inferiority complex. Vivian, um, if you could quickly type, okay, what is life? Human beings need it. Great. So Vivian, why do you want to look at inferiority complex? Please, you can keep your responses coming. And I'll be happy to respond to either of your responses, even beyond the conference of today's presentation. Vivian, why do you want to look at inferiority complex? That's a great idea. Okay, boldness and disrespect, hydraulic cycle. Okay, dealing with gender-based violence. Hmm, another good idea. Purpose discovery, great one and a huge topic. Research intervention in Africa, it affects a lot of people. I'm one of those people. Great, so this, this statement from Vivian immediately, okay, someone is in unleashing your potential. That was also an excellent point. So Vivian's statement, she wants to do it because she had, she experienced it herself, and that is a source of inspiration. And she knows that a lot of people are affected by it. So that can even be an introductory statement that a lot of people suffer from inferiority complex, full stop. But sadly, very few get a chance to talk to people about it. So that is a catchy statement. The moment you start with that, now the rest is up to you to now do the research to find out the effect of inferiority complex. I believe if I'm to keep asking Vivian further questions on how it affected her, we would have a lot of things to talk about because that concept alone is a lot. Yeah, thank you. So I'm happy to have further discussions with you beyond today's effect of peer, peer pressure, beyond um, today's presentation. I would want to. I want us to keep within the confines of our time. So I'll just move on quickly. If anyone has anything to um, further engage, I'm happy to speak with a person. Now, uh, okay. So having said all that, I said, what to put in your content? Step on your personality, your words, your images and the organization, you'd have to also know that dealing with grassroots ignorance majorly in Africa. I, I love the ideas you guys are writing. I'm seriously happy I attend. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy about the ideas you guys are talking about. And as I said earlier, I'm happy to discuss with anyone beyond the confines of today's um, conversation. So your personality, your words, your images and organization majorly I don't speak on organization. Nothing wrecks a good content than poor presentation. It is very serious. So please, in planning your content, the questions we asked or the questions I presented, you can provide your responses to them. You start putting the bits and pieces together. It's good to have 10 drafts. It doesn't matter. Keep working at it. It's with the con and you see the reason why you need to take a break from your work is the moment you do that and you come back to it with a fresh eye, it helps you to see something different that you didn't see before. Now, my concluding slide, I want to talk about this one and I'm done. The iceberg of a good content. Once you provide a good content, what people see is the one on top and they will all be clapping for you. I remember when SOP and I were discussing this and the idea about presenting on good content, 
one of the things I said to him was, this is a broad topic. Where do you want me to pick it up from? And I had to download new textbooks, huge ones too, and sit down and read them. I had to go online to do my research and all that. I had to keep thinking through the ideas I intended communicating to you guys today. It started with an idea. Sop had discussed it with me. So the idea is at the tip of the iceberg. No one sees it. The other things people don't see is the patience, the persistence, the failures you go through. I remember the day I was reading those articles, those textbooks. At the point I was even tired. I was like, ha, huh, this huge test. When am I going to finish reading them? But I had to keep pushing. Sometimes I kept editing my style. So I kept asking me different questions. I had to keep editing different stuff. They are part of the failures, sacrifices, disappointment, discipline, hard work, dedication, proofreading, research. People don't see these things. But as I said earlier, it is worth doing it. And once all these things come together, the outcome is the good content that you create, which people will see it and they'll be happy. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Mr. Mahodi. Um, it's, it's, it's been so wonderful listening to you and Jeff. It's, it's so wonderful. There is no better way to describe it. And we are out of time. <laughs> like we are totally out of time. <laughs> we are 12 minutes out. So um, Jeff and Mauli has given us very important important steps. If you stick to our lesson, you are going to understand everything fully in the end. So, but I don't want to speak before you ask your question so that I don't frame your questions for you. If you have any questions you would like to ask, I will just take the first three hands. Um, Kayode's hand does not count because that hand has been up for a long time. <laughs> Right. Well, Kayode, do you want to say anything? I'm asking you to unmute. Well, if you have any question to ask Mr. Mauli, take your hands up right now. Otherwise, I'll take the first three people, just three people. Um, as we said, you can always ask your questions. They have their details here. This is Emmanuel's um, email address. You can ask him any question that you want. And um, Jeff's email address is there as well. Um, um, when we send the full package, we'll be doing that later today. I'm already in another day. So <laughs> we'll do that later today. Towards the early mornings, you are going to find the, each person's ad, um, email address inside. So I have two hands up. So um, I'm going to ask um, Wonu again to take her hands up. Um, sorry, to ask her question rather. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Sop. Um, thank you for the session, Mr. Mauli. I wanted to ask that um, Jeff mentioned something when he was talking about delivery. Um, he mentioned that one-on-one um, -on -one is better than um, Zoom sessions, which is better than phone calls, and that's better than written words. So I, I want to ask that how can I use content creation in that aspect? That's, I understand that that's um, different from creating my proposal or creating the um, one pager that's a few words of like that articulates my proposal. But how can I use content creation in delivering my pitch? Thank you very much. Right, thank you. So I'll take all the questions, you answer all of them together so that we don't build on it. So Kevin, would you like to unmute yourself and ask a question? Calvin, you can unmute yourself if your network would allow. Um, while we wait for you, 
thank God he, you can unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Carry on. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Amal. Sorry if I didn't pronounce the name very well. But actually, my question is quite a very simple one. Because you said something like, um, referring to content creation, that it could be a new idea and it can actually be an existing idea that you are modifying. Let me just leave it at that level. So I like to ask this question. So, this is actually an idea that is already done that you tend to see some modification and improvement on. Um, we can't really make out what you're saying, Mr. Kelvin. Uh, Mr. Tango, do you need to speak up? And you've muted yourself again. Um, I speak. Yes, be louder, please. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my question, I my question is about uh, the difference between an article and a blog. The basic difference between an article and a blog. Thank you. Okay, this is Kelvin Augustine. The yes, difference between an article and a blog, right? Yes. So, thank God. Do you want to ask a question now? That's my question. I asked. So, Okay, you are thank God. Okay. I said the difference so, between uh, I need the kind uh, kind of thank you, thank you. So Kelvin, then Kelvin, do you want to ask your question? Yes, I don't know if you can hear me now. Yes, you can, but you could come closer to your device. If you are using a laptop, maybe come closer to it. Okay, my question was actually um I was referring to when she said in content creation, it must not necessarily be a new idea. Because that it can actually be an existing idea. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, it can be an existing idea. Carry on. Okay. So now, if you are actually working on an existing idea, so how could, like, how can you perfectly, like, like, you can perfectly do your work with um, a kind of, um, without um, level of plagiarism? I don't know, like how you can balance okay, without plagiarism, without having to steal ideas. Is that what you mean? Like you able to balance this and make it your own personal work, even if it was an original idea. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, Kelvin, do you want to ask your question? So, we have one last hand up here. Eyanu or Ladi Pupo? Yeah, no, go for it. Okay, wait, I need to ask you to unmute. Sorry. So go for it, Yan. Okay, um, good evening, sir. Yes. Thank you for the session. It was quite like I really love that I attended this session. Okay, my question is um, can I as a person actually be involved in academic writing? Because I Okay, I love writing about um, scientific research, although I just started working on it and still be involved in um, writing pro business proposals for people or for outreaches. Like, can, can I be able to combine the two? Because if I look at it very well, writing academic, it's just writing academic, um, academic writing is just something I just love. Like, I just love it. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say because I've been look, I've been looking for okay, what do I really like? What do I really like doing that I can derive joy from? And I, I just realized that okay, there's a way I writing comes with ease for me. And so that's basically my question. I don't want to talk to you. Thank you, sir. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys for the excellent questions. And I'd like to pick, maybe I'll start from the bottom up, if that's okay. Yeah, so I'll start with um Yanda the last question. Yeah, you can literally write on everything and anything you want. So I started off by writing from my undergrad, but I'm proud to that. I've always loved the idea of writing. Even as a kid, I found myself writing a lot of things. I'll just be there and I'll be having a lot of ideas and I'll keep writing them. 
that, that, that had nothing to do with academia. And so I went to uni, then I got a chance to write something on my dissertation. As an undergrad, once, as soon as I completed, I had a chance to supervise someone's master's um, thesis. And I was scared when I was told to supervise the person. I was just an undergrad, but I was able to do it successfully. I moved on from there, got opportunity to write a proposal. That was academic proposal. Everything seems to be academic, academic until something different came up, writing a business proposal with my brother. The difference between academic writing and business proposal and all the other forms of writing is this. Being an academic, in a way, helps you to do your research properly. So if someone invites you to write or co-write something on a business or even something outside your field, you can, the only thing that you need to do is just do your readings on it and be ready to learn how to write. I give a critical, um, a good example. Two years ago, I wrote a paper and I was told, that was an article, and I was told to write a journalistic piece from it, like write it as a journalist. I'd never written anything as a journalist before. So I wrote the first piece, it went for review. It came back and it said, it's a good piece, but it sounds very academic. And it was expected. So they gave me a mentor who was a journalist in, uh, from Sri Lanka and she had to mentor me. I had to just be humble enough to listen to her when she tells me, don't write it this way. Don't write this one that way. And that is how I learned. And because I was following the teachings and the guidance she was giving to me, I ended up writing a good piece and it was published um, in the Oxford um, University Press. Oxford, um, they have a student run um, journal. It was published there because I followed what she was teaching me. So yes, you can do writing or anything, but you should, the most important thing, you should be willing to learn. I hope that answers your question. Now, the second question is the difference between an article and a blog is, it has a link with what I said earlier. An article often, if it's an academic article, is often straight to the point and it's often heavy based on using academic jargons and all those things. Blogs are often nice when you write it simply. Write it very simply, just go straight to the point. It should be more like a narrative, a story you tell it. So someone shouldn't go to your blog and be reading, a person should feel they are reading, a textbook and they are holding the eye. Oh my God, what is this boy, this boy talking about? It should be something engaging. Start with a story, a nice story. An example, when I came to this university, I was told to, we we're given opportunity to write a blog on our experience here. I started off as a story. I even spoke about when I came into the country and I was picked up from the airport, what I experienced on the road, the things I missed, on the induction week and all that. They are all part of it. So a blog is on the lighter side. Non, it should be something catchy, something simple to read and easy to digest. So that's the difference between a blog and an, art, um, an article. Even as a PhD student, we expected to write blogs. Your supervisor doesn't want your blog to look like your academic writing, else people wouldn't read it. So it's about speaking your words in a layman's language, something that any ordinary person can read and understand. Thank you. Then the other question has to do with existing ideas, picking them and balancing it. <laughs> I'm writing on plastic waste. Plastic waste is not a new problem. It's something that everyone talks about, but I'm interested in writing it. So how did I start by telling my story? I started by saying that, I started by saying that it's a B-L-O-G place. It's B-L-O-G, not B L. CK, blog and article. So I started out by saying that I read what was there, understood what people are writing. Then I, I then I also knew the idea I had in mind. So anytime you talk about politics, everyone thinks about politics as the normal politics we see people doing, especially for that part of the world and all those that. But I decided to explain politics as the way people behave our attitude, our behavior. So anytime I say politics in my writing, this is what I mean by politics. It's something innovative from my perspective because anytime we say politics, we look at government politics and all that. And I use the different word for those people as governors. And even that, when I use governors, I said I'm using governors to mean the policies they come up with. So when I'm talking about politics, I'm looking at human beings behaving politically. Like they know this is the right thing to do, but they will say something different for people to think about something different. And all that. Then I also said a story of 
the fact that waste do not move and that people are those uh, people are the individuals who generate waste. This is something someone had already written, but I wrote it in a way that sounded in my own language and I referenced the person. That is one way to avoid plagiarism. Don't be afraid to reference. If the idea is not yours, reference the person. But the part that is your idea, that is an extension of it, add it to it to explain further. So that is how you avoid plagiarism. And if you quote someone, the exact statement the person said, reference the person and put the page number there. That is how you avoid plagiarism. And your idea will become new when you research further into it. You engage with people and you get you do your analysis. And that is when you find something you add to it. So for ideas, they will keep developing. You avoid plagiarism by appropriately referencing people and adding page numbers and punctuating properly. That is really, really important. Now, the last question has to do with um, content create creation um, within the context of in-person, online, written, and all that. You can have the same text. So I spoke on content creation today, and it's online. If I'm putting it together as, an, as a written piece, all that I said, I will basically put a summary of what I have in mind, go straight to the point. I wouldn't be telling different, different stories. I'll go straight to the point and use bullet points to help explain my points simply. Now the good part of this is if you're able to create your ideas properly on a paper and you go through it, you read it and you understand it. When you are with, us, with, with your audience in person, you are speaking, you don't need to be giving references and all that, that is not needed. Go straight to the point. Tell them what is the most important thing. So if I was going to speak with someone in person, I would start off by telling the person the five principles or the five transferable principles for content creation. That would be where I'll start from. Once I say that, then I can be explain what content creation and all those things are because I want the person to know the transferable principles. Once the person identifies with it, I can now explain. So that is the difference between, that's the difference in relation to how you can use um, the same content creation in a written speech, in, in an interview, or maybe something online. And when it is online, please, as much as possible, use images, that is good. When it's an online presentation, and you want to talk about something, often use images and little speech. Uh, I don't know, I'm not talking about blogs still, I'm not talking about content creation, like using it in a pitch. If it's a page, please go straight to the point. Don't beat around the bush, go straight to the point. I hope I've answered your questions. Right, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. And I really appreciate everyone that has been patient to talk, talk to this time. Um, Michael Augustine is really intent on raising his hand. So Michael, what would you have to say? Let's just use you as the denouement. Okay, good evening, sir. Yes, Michael. Thank you for the class. I will also thank you, Mr. for the lecture. My question is, uh, when you have a uh, an idea you want to put, you want to write. So how do you, uh, how do, and you don't know how to put it, you don't know how to put it in a good format. So what, which, how do you go about it when you don't know how to gather it in a reasonable format? Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, Michael. So briefly, I know you're running out of time. How I respond to this is this. Um, I always tell everyone I engage with that sometimes the way we speak, not sometimes, often the way we speak is different from the way we write. So I'll use an example. When I was writing my PhD proposal, I never started by writing it in a book. I started by recording myself on this phone. So I'll be walking in town. I'll get an idea. I had a page for myself. I'll quickly go to my page use the voice recorder and speak what I have in mind. Then I record it. I kept doing that for a long time. Then when, once I get home, I write down, I just sit down and I transcribe all that I said. The things I was saying when I was working in town, for some of them, I was sitting in a trotro. 
and I, I and I recorded I had that Okado all those things and I recorded myself after recording those things and transcribing it I used those as a template to look for articles to make it more meaningful and that is what I presented for my proposal that is what when I was interviewed that is the same thing I said when I was asked to write the relevance of my PhD that's the same thing I said because I had the ideas long time ago so I just recorded myself so please start by recording yourself if you can't write the ideas properly the more you keep doing that and you keep playing the idea back to yourself you will see where the lapses are and how to fill in those loopholes I hope that answers your question I'm surprised you're saying that because I do exactly that too. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Many times I feel like, okay, how do I start this very impressive piece of writing? I record myself, then I type it out. Then I now correct what I've typed out. But then when I take walks, the idea just drops in my head. So yeah. I want to thank everyone that's been here. Thank you so much, Mauli and Jeff. Thank you for staying right up to this time. Tomorrow, we're taking two more classes again. And just follow the training as it goes, right? Follow the training as it goes. And you'll be shocked at how much progress you can make in four days. Um, tomorrow, we start again by 6 p.m. And um, I will really look forward to seeing everybody again. Thank you so very much. Yeah. And thank you guys for staying through thank you for listening and your excellent questions sop and pff thank you for the opportunity to speak thank you thank and you so God bless you all you so much. see you bye 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 bye